Hey everyone, welcome back to a, another retouching tutorial. My name is Dustin Meyer. Today uh, we're going to go over um, how to do uh, like headshot retouching with uh, someone who has a prominent amount of uh, blemishes, uh, which you'll see a lot with uh, you know adolescents, teenagers, but also with adults. So um, let's just jump right into it. Okay, so uh, to give you guys an idea, let's see here. I just wanted to show you guys in Lightroom uh, what I started with. So we're going to go back and let's see here. Let's do Phil. Good old Phil. Sorry, that was a bad joke. And then let's do one to one. Whoops. So as you can see, uh, we do have a uh, quite a bit of facial shine as well as blemishes. So we're going to see what we can do. Now this is kind of a uh, you know try as we go uh, tr blah, blah, try as we go thing here. So uh, let's let's see what we can pull off. Okay, so we're gonna go back here. I'm gonna go to fit, and then uh, just kind of show you guys. Uh, usually, what I like to do is throw in a little bit of a vignette because uh, I use a white backdrop, and I think the distance between my uh, my ring light. Um, I've got an LED ring light just because it's really convenient to use. Um, just you know uh, available light settings but of course you can also use flash but as you can see here we've got uh, our ring flash or ring light LED constant ring light uh, then what I do uh, I've been trying something new when it comes to uh, sharpening uh, especially if we're gonna go into uh, portrait pro so what I've been doing is adding grain so we're gonna go back and we're gonna do uh, it's really hard to tell but we're gonna go into grain here let's go just a little bit closer. I'm going to go over to this blank area here so you can see the difference. So it's not much, but I feel like it just helps the uh, the outlines, especially the facial features, stand out a little bit more when it comes to uh, going into the retouching portion. So we're going to go back, and then the next thing that I do is add about, oh, somewhere between 15 to 20 clarity over here. Um, usually 15 is my go-to, but I feel like in this one, because of all the uh, the shadows and the highlights and his hair, we want that to, you know, I, I want that to kind of stand out a little bit more. Plus he's got, you know, these uh, cool uh, camouflage cargo shorts on. And then uh, let's see. Oh, it looks like here. Uh, I went ahead and brought it back down to 15. So scratch that, what I said earlier. So uh, 15 is usually a, a good go-to. Um, so yeah, just forget what I said earlier. And then with vibrance, uh, sometimes, you know, it's needed depending on the outfit. But, uh, you know, just in case this time I did about plus 15 just to kind of bring in the hair and a little bit of the color. So let's let's see what we can do. Uh, we're going to go ahead and import uh, or edit into Portrait Pro Studio Max. Uh, and we're going to do TIFF format. Always do a copy of Lightroom. That way you can go back if it doesn't turn out the way you want color space Adobe uh, 98 because that's what I shoot with and then bit depth is 16 bit with a resolution of 300 and compression is zip otherwise it's just way too big of a file so lately um, when I've been in Portrait Pro I've noticed that when I'm using the brush for editing the skin area for masking the skin area my brush work is really slow and I don't know if my preferences are set to uh, like super high mode when it comes to the preview file. I may go back and double check that or if it's just because I'm running recording software at the same time that I'm working in Portrait Pro. Uh, now I know that I'm running Lightroom in the background, but I do have to keep that open if I want the image to re-import back into Lightroom after I've finished working in Portrait Pro. So, as usual, uh, over here it's already selected that it is a male, so that's good. We're going to go back and just adjust the outlines here. I do feel like because we added some grain that it kind of helped the outlines more accurate, especially around the mouth area. That's usually a very tricky area for the outlines to find. Also uh, with guys because, you know, uh, I don't wear any lipstick. Some of you guys, you know, that might be your preference. but. Um, the uh, color between the lips, <laughs> sorry, the color between the lips and uh, the skin tone is very, um, there's just not a lot of contrast there. So sometimes it can be a little bit tricky, but we've got the tip of the nose. Let's double check the eyes. We're just going to adjust for the eyebrows here. 
one thing that I really love about this is how it just, whenever you make adjustments to the outlines, it kind of recontours to the face just a little bit more because in relationship to where the facial features are, it just kind of intelligently knows how to move the other outlines just in case, especially when it comes to, you know, just knowing the different angles that the face is shot with. So, okay, so first and foremost, wow, that's pretty good. I think I'm working off of my standard, let's see here, my standard, male standard. Yeah, because it didn't change anything. And let's see here, let me bring that up. Oh, by the way, um, I lowered the resolution on my screen, so hopefully, you guys will be able to see the uh, the sliders, you know, the little menu names a little bit clearer because I've had people in the past say, you know, hey, it's hard to read that. And um, I've tried recording in 4K, but um, either I talk too long or just YouTube, you know, poops out on me and it's just super big file. And I know most of you guys are just watching 1080p anyways. So uh, real quick under face sculpt, sorry, uh, don't really need it that much, uh, especially, you know, on guys. Plus, he's a pretty fit uh, pretty fit guy here. We're going to go to skin smoothing and we're going to go to face and let's see. So yeah, this is where I was talking about earlier. Like I'm moving my mouse around pretty smoothly, but this brush seems to, um, of course now it's doing okay while I'm actually using the brush tool, clicking and holding. <laughs> but, um, like if I'm just moving my mouse around, notice that it's a little choppy maybe it's because it's determining where the skin is while I'm moving the brush over it before I start clicking it. I don't know, but um, I do feel like that's a little bit of a performance issue in the software. So if any of you guys have noticed this before, you know, just uh, let me know if you've got a um, suggestion on how to make that go smoother or if it's just because, you know, I've and recording and using Lightroom in the background, you know, maybe that's what it is. And then also we're just gonna brush over the neck here, which also comes in handy if they've got some uh, either razor burn or just some prominent, uh, you know, I don't know what you wanna call it, five o'clock shadow or whatever. Um, and then we're gonna shrink this down here. I know I'm being really picky, but on this one specifically, uh, I wanna make sure that we get everything nice and covered because you know notice over here we've got some uh, blemishes on the hairline and also I feel like if you uh, go into the brush tool here and go to uh, you know the skin area brushes and whatnot um, the opacity or the intensity or you know the amount that you brush on brush in here a lot of times can actually um, you know, do like 100%, kind of like when you're working uh, in Photoshop, you know, it's just a full fill amount. But um, sometimes it doesn't quite uh, catch it all, like it's kind of a half fill or half flow. Uh, so I want to make sure that in this mode, we have as much of the uh, calculate skin area as possible. So we're going to click OK, let it do its job here. Okay, so uh, we're going to just go to face. Let me zoom out just a tad. You know what, we're just gonna stay in here. Uh, let's see, we're gonna go up. So that kind of helps get rid of any uh, sort of like dark circles under the eyes, uh, which I've noticed a lot with clients that come in to shoot in the afternoon because a lot of times, you know, if they're working, they have a daytime job or whatever, they're kind of stressed from the day. So uh, that definitely helps here. Let's go to imperfections. Let's see, I didn't notice much here. Just a little bit, kind of help get rid of some of the texture. Uh, we're not going to do thin wrinkles. This guy's a teenager, so I'm not really worried about that. Fine shadows. I think we're going to leave that all the way down because it helps um, helps maintain the actual like facial features without softening them too much. Uh, remove pores. Let's just see. We're going to go all the way up. Okay, that's that's pretty soft. It does help. We've got some detail up in here still, but um, I do feel like that might be. You know, we're going to leave it there because we're going to go back into uh, texture and raise the texture amount. So let's see, go to zero. And let's do one to one. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see this, but uh, it's not so soft that any texture is lost, which obviously uh, we don't want to go for that plastic look. 
And you know, while we're in here, we're gonna clear that up a little bit. Notice again, uh, my strength is down to somewhere around 20. I've got it set to 18 right now. That way, uh, just kind of click as we go. Just add a little bit here and there without, let's see here, without it being too drastic. Spacebar. Okay, so we have quite a bit over here. Let's see what happens if we go into um, spot removal. So we're gonna do maximum. Hmm, didn't do much. Imperfections, round eyes, remove shine. Okay, so that might actually, we might actually have to go in and kind of paint over that with the touch up brush. But let's take a look at the shine real quick. Let's go to face. Okay, so we're gonna bring the shine up a little bit. And I think if we bring the pores down just a little bit, Actually, no, let's crank it up again. Sorry. We're going to do one to one. And we're going to go into the texture mode and just bring it up a little bit more. Okay, that, that makes a big difference. All right, and let's check the shine here. Sometimes you don't notice a difference until you get closer towards the end. All right, let's take a look. Better. Let's see, we're gonna bring texture down just a little. Uh, there we go. Okay, so let's go. And remember I also added some grain, uh, which I just remembered. So we can bring that down just a little bit. Whoops, sorry. Okay, <laughs> uh, that was a phone call. So anyways, uh, we are gonna go now into uh, Okay, so sorry, there was a phone call. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do this. We're gonna go down to skin lighting. Don't really need it because, as you can tell, I already kind of had it fixed. Let's see. Now, keep in mind again, when you're zoomed all the way out, it does look really soft. But if you go into the face, we do have that texture. So let's take a look here. Skin texture type. Whoa. I just, you know, I just want to make sure that everything looks good here around the eyes. Let's bring imperfections down. Let's bring thin wrinkles down. That helps. And then we're going to go down to remove shine. And like I've said before, I do like to leave a little bit of shine in there because it does uh, help create that dimension. And let's see. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. It just seems to be a little bit. There we go. Okay, so bringing down the uh, the eyes slider just to have that back. Otherwise, it just it looks way, way too, uh, almost kind of makes his face look bloated. So we don't want to do that. And then, uh, okay, so we're going to try the touch-up brush here. And let's see, we're going to do, let's go one-to-one. -one. All right, and we're going to bring that up. Now, keep in mind up there on the strength, I've got it set to 18, so uh, we're a little bit low here, and holy smokes. Now, one thing to also, that I also have uh, learned in the past is that while using this, make sure that the, uh, the tone or where you place the brush is, it, it's the same tone all across, because if you start from here and you go this way, a lot of times I'll find that it carries, it, it clones the, uh, the, the tone of the skin and that brings it down here. So I try to kind of stick to the similar areas. Now I know some of you guys are thinking, okay, this is not a, uh, a, quick, a quick solution to somebody with this kind of uh, skin, but keep in mind this, um, this guy does have a lot of blemishes. You know, sometimes people just have a lot going on. And if you bring the size of your brush up, it's gonna, it's gonna take into consideration uh, a wider range of skin tones so that you, uh, you don't accidentally, you know, just draw a streak across the face. And just watch out for the jawline. And I'm just kind of going over the redness. 
Now, one thing I am worried about is these kind of red patches over here. Let's see, so far, let's go, let's fix that. And we're gonna go up here and just kind of touch up this area right here. And sometimes it's it's not even, sorry, I'm repeating myself. Sometimes it's not even really a matter of uh, the person um, having, you know, just just blemishes, just red spots. You know, sometimes they there's a lot of different texture going on. Okay. Just a really quick overview. And for this time around, I don't have too much of an issue with getting rid of uh, freckles and stuff. Let's see what happens if I up the strength. Let me go with the bigger size. Okay, so we're gonna zoom out. That's too much. Okay, so I think this is something that, you know, can be a work in progress. Um, you know, as you can tell, this is, there's a lot going on over here, poor guy. Um, but let's see what we can do. Let's see, let's go back to fit. You know what, let's go in. There we go. Again, it looks way soft, but if we go in one-to-one, -one, let's see, it's not... Um, it's not as drastic. So one more time, let's just bring this down a little bit. There, I think, I think actually we're just gonna take the eye slider and go all the way down because he doesn't have a whole lot of wrinkles in there. So I take back what I said earlier. Um, I do feel like uh, we're losing too much definition uh, around the eyes and therefore it's just making it um, the face overall just look a little too soft. Let's see what happens when we bring the imperfections down. Yeah, let's uh, let's zoom in there. I just noticed a big difference. Okay, so like all these spots and everything. Now, if I hadn't gone through and touched up a lot of this stuff with the touch-up brush, you'd probably see a whole lot more. At least that's my suspicion. But let's see what happens when I get rid of or go back to the imperfection setting. Jeez, that's that's nuts. Let's try it again. Okay, so a lot around the nose, on the nose and the chin area, and let's redo it. God, that's crazy. Okay, all right, now let's um, it just, you know, I know that it's just kind of doing a quick preview of, you know, the effects, even though it's not one-to-one. -one. And the other thing you can do too, I've done in the past, is go into uh, Lightroom. So mouth and nose, uh, we don't really need, well, you know, let's do the sharpened mouth. There we go. Nose contrast, that helps a lot. Hair, no, skin coloring. This one's a big one, in my opinion. Natural. Let's bring the tan back to zero. And last but not least, Oops, let's go back in here. Okay, so my plan is to actually go back into Lightroom and add maybe a little bit more clarity, but I mean, this actually saved me a lot of time. I mean, if I wasn't talking to you guys, I could probably do this a whole lot quicker. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you tried Portrait Pro? Have you done uh, other types of software? And you know, tried the demo, just whatever you think is better. Um, but other than that, if you want to see more of my retouching series, make sure to subscribe. If you learned something today, make sure to give it a like. Thanks again, guys, so much for watching. My name's Dustin Meyer, and we will see you next time.